spent some time preparing for um, what they will say in the discussion, and we've listened to the song a couple of times, and we have um, made lots of notes of things that they feel like ready, so they have things ready to say, and they're usually pretty excited to kind of get started, and they want to say things, and they want to get, get started, and they really do like the independence of, of how those kinds of circles run and, and how, how they kind of, they facilitate them. Um, I often find that in a group of um, 14 to 18 eighth graders, there are always some leaders who emerge, some kids who kind of pull other kids up and kind of drive the discussion. There are always the quieter kids who don't really want to speak. Um, and I have different strategies that I usually use um, after the first time of watching them do a discussion of some ideas to help them um, share their ideas. I either say, you're gonna start the discussion, you're gonna go first, um, so that they know that they can get it out of the way, or sometimes as a way to kind of get kids like feeling more comfortable. I have them write down exactly what they're gonna say and, and tell them when would be a great time for them to share it. Sometimes I have them like buddy up with someone who's more confident and they kind of buddy together to find a way to kind of share more um, into the conversation. Um, or if I've got a really quiet child who's really, really nervous and really reticent to speak, I start off by having them just write me a written like what they would have said if they have been if they felt more comfortable to speak, and I, I use that as a grading thing initially until I get them started. Um, if I get to a point and it does happen pretty much every year where there's some kids who really just feel so nervous about speaking, what I tend to do is to um, is to do them in a, like a small group discussion with like three to four kids and then bring them into the bigger circle. Um, I find that usually kind of gets them used to the idea of speaking to their peers more. So what I do before we start our first discussion is I go through our um, what I call our zone of expectations. So my big goal for a discussion is that everyone participates and nobody dominates. And I explain this to them as like, I want everyone to share their ideas, but I don't want to just hear one or two voices over and over again. And then depending on how, um, how comfortable they are with the idea of a discussion, I either have them share out things that would be in the zone of expectation or I kind of give them give them things to of what my expectations are. So um, the things that I, I have like outside the zone of expectation, so outside the circle, I don't want to hear yelling, raised voices, people interrupting each other, people talking over each other. I also say I don't want to hear like loud, long spaces of silence where nobody says anything. And then things inside the, um, the zone of expectation, expectation are that you ask questions, you refer to the text, you make connections, listening to each other is as important as sharing ideas, so I have them um, sh listen to understand. Um, they're flexible, they add to each other's ideas, try and be respectful, and try and speak clearly. Those are the kind of things that I do to kind of set up the, the discussion before they start speaking to each other.